Hey everybody, Mayor Paul Haken here, uh, back with another episode of what we call On The Job. And this is a segment uh, where we highlight different jobs in the city that are performed by our city staff, city employees, uh, some of which aren't your more visible jobs. You may not see them uh, as much as you see a lifeguard or a police officer. And uh, it's another way that we can highlight the great work that the city employees do to deliver services to our residents. So today we're here at Chef Lance's uh, on Phillips, uh, right across from the Levitt, Levitt Shell downtown. And I'm here with Jeff Schmidt. Jeff is one of our inspectors in our health department. And uh, Jeff, thanks for joining me, man. We we're gonna highlight a little bit what our inspection team does. So welcome. It's great to be here, yeah. thanks. So how long have you been doing inspections for the city? I've been with the city almost 20 years doing right. this type of work, yeah. And when people think of health inspections, a lot of times they think of restaurants, mm -hmm. which is why we're here. But there's a whole bunch of type of inspections you guys do. Tell me, tell me the breadth of what you guys do. Well, we inspect all kinds of food establishments. Um, if you're preparing food or selling food in Sioux Falls, we'll inspect you. Um, we also inspect all the lodging, all the hotels and motels. We inspect all the tattoo establishments in Sioux Falls. We inspect the mobile home courts for nuisance violations. Um, we license and regulate all the in-home daycares, um, mm. and we also respond to uh, neighborhood nuisance complaints that some neighbors may have in their neighborhoods. So a ton of stuff, yep. other than yep. just the restaurant checks. Yep, we stay busy. So tell me how, so we're obviously at a restaurant. Mm -hmm. How does this work? Do you guys just like knock on the door at a restaurant and say, hey, surprise, here we are, and they scramble? Is it like when the IRS does that to you and audits you, or is it is it more planned? Do they know? No, we, that's what we do. We we come in and announce and knock on the door or say we're here and uh, time for your health inspection. And sometimes people are like, oh, welcome, and sometimes yeah. they're like, they uh, flee. Yeah, sometimes. Can you give us uh, a couple of days, please? Yeah. <laughs> so, what sort of stuff are you looking for? You come in, you just you're just eyeballing, you know, mm -hmm. cleanliness, uh, how they're disposing it, yeah. waste, like what kind of stuff? Well, we look at uh, we check. Um, the place for cleanliness and um, we, uh, we inspect the food storage areas and we watch the preparation. We, um, we take temperatures on the hot and cold food. We check their dish machines. We check their uh, sanitizer buckets and um, everything to do with food. We're there, um, but cleanliness is a big part of it. Yeah. I won't put you on the spot, but I'm guessing you've seen some interesting things in your 20 years. I have, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but what, what does it take for uh, establishment, I mean, not to be considered um, uh, safe and sanitary? Like, like, do you ever get to the point where you can say to a facility, hey, you guys need to shut your doors until this stuff is fixed? And how often does that happen? That has happened, but not very often, luckily. Um, most of the places in Sioux Falls are a really good place to eat, and they're very conscientious, and they do a good job. Um, we have, over the years, I've seen some... Um, rough places, but you know, we try to work with them, get them back in compliance, do a lot of education, a lot of training, a lot of work with these people to get them where they need to be. So what's, what's your own kitchen look like at home? It's pretty clean? It's not that bad, no. Is it? That's not. If I came over there, you, we passed? We could, have, we could have a meal, yeah, we could. We could have a meal, okay. I might take you up on that. Okay. Well, here's what we're gonna do. We are going to jump in the back kitchen, okay. uh, and we're gonna meet up with Chef Lance, and he knows we're coming, okay? So it, uh, it, it's announced, and we're gonna check out uh, Jeff and working with Lance in action. Yep. All right, so now we're in the back in the industrial kitchen here at Chef Lance's on Phillips. Uh, it's kind of cool, because I've eaten a lot of meals that have come out of this kitchen, so it's kind of <laughs> fun to be in the, the back room here. Uh, what we're gonna do now is, uh, Jeff's gonna just show me what they do when they get in the back of the kitchen. They got coolers, they got the cutting boards, you got the food prep station. So, uh, where are we gonna start? We're gonna dig into the cooler let's, first. Let's go in the walk in here, yeah, and okay. see what's going on. So, this is a pretty standard check you guys will do. You'll check the coolers. Yep. All right. Check the coolers and check for cleanliness. Okay. And we'll take some food temps to make sure that everything is properly temped. Okay. Properly stored. This is, a, this is a clean cooler, man. This looks this better is nice. than my fridge. Yeah, 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 this is good. And the food temps here are great. They're 41 or less, so we're good. Okay, so that's kind of what you watch in the cooler? 40, yep. 41's the, 41's and the then, bad point? Yeah, and then make sure things clean in there. Okay. Um, and then what about like, like ice? They got ice machines, cutting boards, you check all this check stuff? Check the cutting boards off, make sure that they're in good shape and they're clean. Okay. Those all look pretty good. All right. 
uh, ice machine. Now these, Same thing. These refrigeration units is where we, you can have Legionnaires disease yep, and stuff. You can have if, all kinds of salmonella. You can salmonella. have all kinds of things. Yep. So this is important to check too. It's clean and in good shape. Um, we would check their ice scoops, make sure that they're in good shape and clean. And those look like they're in good shape. Okay. So, so that's kind of some of the prepping and some of the raw food materials. Now uh, we go over to where the food is actually prepared. And I know you got a whole bunch of stuff you guys do over there. So let's walk over there. All right. So now we're over in kind of the food prep and the grill area here at Chef Lance's. And first off, before we look at the food prep, Tell me what kind of stuff you guys look at on the grills and the griddles, Jeff. Oh, well, we look for cleanliness. We want to make sure the hoods are clean and not covered with grease. They're well maintained. Just cleanliness of the whole area, that it's in good shape. Okay. And then we will check some food temps in the coolers here. Okay, yeah. So, and you so, wanna... let's, how do, so how does this work? So you guys, you go in, it looks like you got the, the accoutrements, I'll call it, in here. And now you check this temp just like you check stuff in the cooler. Yes, and just... Uh, just point and shoot, and you'll get a reading. Okay. So. 36.9, that's good. Yeah, that's good. It's good. 38.6. Day two. Let's see him. 90.3. Well, you're close. I'm a little cool in here, <laughs> huh? So what happens if you find something that's, let's say, let's say those mushrooms come, come in hot at 40, 45 degrees? Then well, we'd have to doing? have the establishment Remove those and discard those. Okay. Yep. So they get a, a write up, a violation basically? So they get a they... violation and we want, we'd ask them to remove it while we're still here. Okay. Okay. Yep. Okay. Got it. And are people, I'm assuming facilities are usually pretty accommodating with that. They, they yeah. Understand yep. And, yep. 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 They understand and they do what's right usually. Right. That's right. So. Well, that's awesome. So we talked about the, the coolers, we talked about the, uh, the food that's ready to prepare, uh, the cutting boards, the grills, food prep stations. There's a lot that goes into being a health inspector. Remember, we have hundreds and hundreds of restaurants in our community that these guys are checking on a regular basis. They also check things like food trucks. So the food trucks that you see on the boat, those are all subject to the same inspections. The schools, the cafeterias in the schools, all that, uh, all to ensure we have safe food to eat in our community. So, Jeff, thanks a lot, man. I appreciate Thank you. you doing this today. Yep, thanks for so. coming. All right, well, we're out of the kitchen. The inspection process is done. I'm joined by the guy whose name is on the, the restaurant, Chef Lance. Lance, thanks for letting us poke around a little bit. Not a problem. I uh, appreciate it. How long you had the restaurant here? We act actually opened last year, just right after Labor Day. Okay. Yep. And so when city health inspectors come, which they do, and I know we weren't here that long ago, yep. uh, they good to work with. I mean, tell me about the process from the proprietor standpoint. Yep, yep. So actually, uh, this is the, I think the fourth or fifth kitchen that I've opened. And rather than wait for them to show you what you're doing wrong. Like when we opened this place, we actually invited them to come in and say, hey, we're thinking about doing this. Does that work? Does that make sense? What about this area? Is this gonna work or do we need to do something different? Okay. Rather than doing it the wrong way and then having to turn around and do it right, we usually just ask their advice and that's super smart. That works really good for us. So. We got, you know, we see that a lot in our building industry too. Rather than doing all the plan work and then come and present to the city, if we can collaboratively do it on the, on the front end, it avoids headaches on the back end. Absolutely. So. Well, we really appreciate you opening up your place to no us. No problem. Uh, thanks for letting us poke around, and uh, I'm sure you'll see maybe not me, but one of our specters uh, in the near future. Yeah, so, appreciate absolutely. it, sir. No problem. Have right. a good one. Thank you. All right, we're now out of the kitchen and into the fire. Ooh, dad joke there, Eric. <laughs> uh, we're out at the Fire Safety Training Center. So uh, if you don't know physically where this is, we are out uh, on in the airport air guard campus. Sometimes when you're on the bike trail out by the Sanford Sports Complex, you can look across and you can see our burn towers and other things. That's our Fire Safety Training Center. And uh, we have a current cadet class that's training to be uh, the next generation of firefighters in our community. One of those is with me. Derek. Hey, Derek. How's it going, Paul? Good. How are you, man? Good, good. So um, you guys are getting through class. You've been in here a lot of weeks already, probably mm -hmm. seven, eight weeks. Is that? No, this is week 11. Week 11 yep, already. Yep. So what made you want to get into fire? Why did you join Sioux Falls Fire Rescue? Um, I wanted to be a firefighter since I was uh, quite a bit younger. My grandfather and a couple of my uncles have all been firefighters, whether at the volunteer level or career. Um, so something I've always wanted to get into, and I'm a very active person, so I didn't want to be sitting at a desk 
for the rest of my life. Um, I'd been doing a lot of that already. So just, I knew it'd be a good fit for me. I love helping people and I love being around people. I love a competitive environment as well. And so that provides all those things I for me. I love it, so. man. Yeah, being active and you know, uh, serving this community, mm -hmm. there's no greater calling in my opinion than mm -hmm. public service, yeah. you know, and doing the work of, of Sioux Falls Fire Rescue. Mm -hmm. So I want to appreciate uh, uh, you guys, say thank you to you guys for that work. Uh, and so uh, Derek is one of, I think, 14 cadets that we're going to have this current class. And I'm going to hear from uh, another cadet here shortly, uh, Natalie. All right. Now we are with another one of our illustrious cadets, <laughs> Natalie. Natalie's from Canton. Yep. Uh, so Natalie, thanks for being here. Thank Tell you. me why you wanted to be part of Sioux Falls Fire Rescue and be part of uh, our great system of firefighters we have here in Sioux Falls. Yeah, so my dad was a volunteer fireman in Canton, and my mom was on the ambulance there, so I got the public service blood in me, I guess, so it made me really excited to get out here. And you told me that we ran a 10K next to each other, and we didn't, yes. I didn't know you, and you didn't know me. No. And we just put that together. Yes. But you, did you beat me? No, well, you were running the half, I think, and I stopped at the 10K. Okay. Yeah. And you're assuming I finished as yeah. well. So as a firefighter, um, are you allowed to eat flaming hot Cheetos? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so there you have it. Everybody's <laughs> wanted to know that. Yes, they do eat flaming hot Cheetos. Ha, joke aside, dad joke. So in a little bit, we're mm -hmm. going to get suited up. Yep. And I'm going to try and train with you guys for a little bit this afternoon and extinguish the fire. Sound good? Yeah. Let's do it. Hopefully Let's see you what can this hang. old man's got in him. <laughs> so here we go. Wow, dude, you can really feel the heat coming off that. All right, so what are you doing now? Pulling the hose. All right, pulling the hose, right? <laughs> So now you're connecting the couplers? No. I just told my driver to charge the hose. Charge the hose? Yep. Where's the water? Oh, this right there is the water source. Out of the, oh, we're out coming of the right truck. up the truck. Hey, if we, if we can push more to the right, stay away from uh, straight behind the car. Hey. Okay. Let's set that and uh, move over like All right, so now we got water. Okay. We got water, in, and you're going to be the lead on the front? Yep. I'm taking the nozzle into the fire, yep. Okay, so Nellie's what they call on the tip. She's got to check her stream. So make sure. Get all the air out. All right. Going to go it's on good. air? good. Oh. Okay, so, so now she's putting out the fire, and it looks like about an 87 Honda Accord SDSU sticker on the back, USD sticker on the back, I should say. 
You can see there, there's some munitions going off. And you can see there's tags. These tags just say, like boy, five year old, flying motionless. All right, so they're going past the victims into the car. All right, looks like the fire's pretty much out. Now the second, the second truck is over here too. Those guys are working on some victims over there. And you can see, see that? They're helping take these other victims away, part of this crash. All right, so what they've really kind of simulated here is like a, a mass disaster scene. There's like people laying all over. Um, and then what's interesting is, if I put this down, they got tags on them that must like show this is what's wrong with this person and they're figuring out how to triage them. So you can see right there, he's reading like what the condition is and how he's gonna treat this patient. That's exactly what all these guys are doing with these victims that are laying out here. While Natalie continues to put out the fire, which looks to be well under control at this point. Uh, might not get your insurance check on that one. Uh, now she's just smoldering. You got it, Natalie? I don't see anything, bro. I don't see any right, fire. Now she's checking, well, she's checking it over for anything else. They have to kind of keep extinguishing it, but it looks to be... Looks to, looks to be good. Those guys have already got some of the people off on the stretcher. So what's really simulated here is like, I don't know, think of a, think of a vehicle, multi-vehicle car accident that happened. The car's on fire, car's traveling down the interstate, whatever, vehicle's body scattered. So that's what they're training on today. Um, and the cadets, from what I understand, they get to do live fire, but not as often as you think. A lot of it's just the training that leads up to this event. So it's kind of a big deal when they get to come out here uh, and actually do like a live simulated fire event right now. And as you can see by the auto dealership that we've acquired out here, this is the first time we've done vehicle fire training. So uh, always different kinds of scenarios with vehicle fires. Cadets go through about 16 weeks of this. So um, this is just, you know, one hour worth of training, but this is what they're doing for 15, 16 weeks before we put them on the... All right, so where do I grab it? Level your legs. Take this side here. Thank you. One, two, three, up. Dude, this, this dude's like actual weight, isn't he? Oh, yeah. His, his first mistake was wearing this shirt, though. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is heavier than I thought. I was expecting like a Coles dummy on this thing. <laughs> How much does this weigh? Uh, 180 pounds, I think. Okay. Uh -huh. Alright, I'm down. One, two, three. Oh. Whew. What do you guys got for this guy? How do you get triage? All right, so now the fire's out. That was exciting, yeah. okay, for me, who sits behind a desk all day. You were what they call on the tip, okay? Yep. You were the front. Yep. So tell me, just walk me through what you just did there. I mean, you like assessed it and you went into it. Like, what, what, what were you doing? What were you thinking? Yeah, so when I was on my truck, my captain told me to hop off and pull the line. So I pulled the line to the car a little away from it and then you pull your first coupling your first 50 feet so you have a little bit of room to work um, and then once I'm ready to charge look at my driver give him the charge while I'm putting my mask on once my mask is on then I'm able to start and get on air and my water's flowing I'm able to start advancing towards the car um, so me and Jared Jared was behind me yep, yep. he was helping me lift it up I was struggling a bit so he's helping me lift it up so I could get the good angle into the car and then you kind of just Get the initial fire out. After that, you're walking around, making sure yeah. there's nothing smoldering. Is that what you were doing at the end? You had like a pick or something, you're kind of poking around in it? Oh. Is that what you were looking at? Yeah, so it's a Halligan. Halligan. And you're right. digging around all over in the car, making sure there's not piles of like where things could reignite and making sure it has 
Got people. It. I mm-hmm. was trying to talk to her during the thing, and she was just like, she was full in it. And I just, <laughs> you ever feel totally useless in a scenario? I just was standing around like a fish out of water. So. I'm sorry. No, dude, it was fun to watch yeah. you work. So thanks a lot, yes. Natalie, for letting me hang out today. So, yeah. so again, this is our fire safety training center. This is what these folks do. You may be wondering where we get these cars from. Kind of a cool story. A lot of our local towing companies, when they get the title to a car and it's kind of junked out, they donate them to the city. And we use them for this purpose. They have gone through all these cars through this oh, cadet, yeah. cadet class. Most of it's for extraction, uh, not so much fires, but today we got to do a fire. So, so uh, with another on the job, Mayor Paul, Natalie, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.